hope it's recording in progress the whole time. It's a nice okay. little informative thing. It is how are you? Thing. Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Got a quick one for you. I, was I don't think it's quick, but you oh, should no, ask it. No, nothing's ever really that quick. No. Well, but I feel thinking. like this one is is some, anyway. You should well, ask this one your because question. there's some shit in here that you have to. I, I'll, I'll get. I'll. I'll get. I'll get ready. I'll. I'll just uh, <laughs> do some warm ups and you know get ready. And it's funny because it was brought up in the office and indirectly at the same time, like a couple hours after I read it. But it sounds like, according to these people writing, and, I, and it could be biased, I don't know. I don't think so because I've got some experience in here too. But <clears throat> it sounds like a lot of the people who were online, so, solely online, that uh, were doing their business, I guess, through Instagram, probably Amazons, whatever. Obviously, profitability we know is always a problem in there. Right or has been a problem because acquisition acquisition costs a consumer, the shipping components, um, all that stuff. It's cool, it's sexy, and I know everybody wants to be online and go online, go online, go online. But there's there's some problems with it. Now you see a lot of public companies like Allbirds, etc., they've gone, and you can see that they're not profitable. So the online thing might be driving a, a good chunk of revenue, but it ain't doing a lot of profitability. So the article in essence was saying that there is, seems to be a move back. They said more to big box. So like the Targets, the Walmarts, the Krogers, like in Canada, to be the Loblaws and shoppers, let's say. The shoppers mm -hmm. are not big box, but Loblaws. Mm -hmm. But I'm not even convinced it's just big box. I think there feels to me like there is a move back to sort of traditional bricks and mortar. Um, and in a lot of reasons, because the profitability online is a challenge on a good day, right? But on some of it, I needed you to help with because I don't like on all the on the on like on the acquisition costs and stuff like like how expensive is it really? Shipping you and I can get into. I mean, I, you know, my, I do so much eBay, and my I've had to go from fifteen dollars on sending cards and coins yeah. to eighteen fifty, yeah. and I'm still subsidizing every single person in Eastern Canada. Like my shipping rates don't matter. If a, a card, like, eighty grams, on twenty two dollars like on the day of this recording. Gas prices in Toronto are two. I think they're like two o two. You know, a oh, buck, I feel bad for you. I just feel like ninety eight or two twenty nine. I know. So so between Vancouver and Toronto, we're in the two dollar range per liter, right? So so if you <clears throat> if you don't think your shipping costs have gone up, they've they've we're basically ten bucks a gallon, baby. Ten yeah, bucks yeah, a gallon now yeah. in, in in the Lower Mainland for the yeah, old school so people. Yeah, so it's it's really still do both. Yeah, it's really crazy, right? Like, so you think freight, anyone who was free shipping under 50 bucks or at $50, you get free shipping. I don't think you do it's that not anymore. that anymore. It's it's double that, right? Like you you, you got to order a hundred bucks and maybe, maybe, a buck maybe and a yeah, maybe and you're breaking even. So is. yeah, so you think of any D2C business that's little, that ships little things, right? So all of those makers that were doing like mugs and... um. You know, Ave Maria Bell, who was on earlier, right. you know, with the with the carvings and the posters and the T-shirts, T-shirts like the shipping is going to cost us more than the T-shirt does now. So how, how do you make that work? Right. That doesn't make any sense. But that's sort of what I'm getting. So, at. I know, for yeah. example, if I send you. OK, you know, those two books I bought you and Mark, those skinny yeah. books, like they're about yeah. like, I don't know, not even an inch thick. They're probably yeah, now like, it's not worth it anymore. I know what it's going to cost yeah, me. Those yeah. two books are going to cost me You're at just gonna least have to keep reading $20 them. to send to you guys. You know what You're I just forgot to mark yesterday? Oh, oh, I had a free flight. I could have got... Ah, yeah, yeah. This is okay, so, so, so okay. Freight is one. Freight is one. You're 100% right. I think um, the other one is like in the D2C model, like cost of acquisition, you were talking about advertising. And well, I don't know. What, I don't know what that actually includes. So if they when they say yeah. cost of acquisition, what are they what are yeah. they getting at? So, so that's what, everything. That's... So that's that's like from a marketing side, cost of acquisition is everything. It's uh, look, I'm I'm out. You know, I'm reaching out to consumers on mass. So that could be Google ads. That could be um. That could be Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram. And the platform um, ads, like you talk, yeah, like on it Amazon, could be programmatic. You know, it's the if you put up pop up banners on other people's sites like display ads, all that kind of stuff, right? So all of that ladders up to like, what did I spend to get someone to click? So a cost per click, and then a cost acquisition is, 
what did it cost them to click? And then what did it cost them to buy? Right. So all of that gets rolled in. Right. So you kind of like at the end of the day, you go, OK, so if I ran ads and it generated, say, 10,000 eyeballs and then I had, um, you know, a thousand people, 10 uh, percent. Right. So if I had a thousand people click on my ads. Right. And then I had 500 of those people buy. Right. The, yeah. All the costs you, you divide you know, into that 500 and that would be your cost of acquisition. Right. So I guess what the, I don't know is I don't yeah. know what it's costing people. So, so the, here's the problem, right. Is, is um, rather than get fixated on the cost, here's, here's the issue, right. Is in the past um, it got more economical because what you would do is you go, Hey, I found Kenny, right. And Kenny clicked on my app, right. So if I find, if Kenny's interested, I can find a like audience like Kenny, right. Right age group, demographic interests, and go after them. So but I used to with, do that on Facebook. Correct, right? correct. Yeah, yeah. And so, you, you know, then you start to get persistent ads, right? Like right. if you ever clicked on an ad that you couldn't get rid of, that's because they get to follow you around. But Apple introduced, um, you know, new privacy laws that now, you know, restrict what you're able to do, which means you're, in a way, marketing is back to – kind of broad scope advertising. Like I can't follow you around anymore. So all I can okay, do I thought, I thought is, that. yeah, so so the nuance, it's a nuance, but it's a really major nuance is, it used to be, I can follow Kenny and anyone who's like Kenny around. Right. But the new kind of Apple stuff has flipped it the other way. And now it's like, I can't, I can't, I, I have to find 50 year olds who like tattoos, cars, Rolexes, cards, right. food, and advertise to all those. So now your cost just went up, right? Because when it was Kenny and Kenny's buddies or a like audience like Kenny, I could target, say, 10,000 people in Canada, 10,000 dudes in Canada who looked We're very or sounded like Kenny. I but see. now I've got to go after whatever the demographic is for 50-year-old male. Oh, fuck. That's, like, that's, that's like we used to yeah. do 15 years ago. Yeah, no, that's no, like the and, old that, school. and that's Remember exactly the, like, newspaper TV yeah. ads, you know, yeah. so if you wanted to find, yeah, for, okay, no offense to these people, because I'm the same people, but yeah. a beer drinking uh, sports yeah. fan, yeah. you'd have to advertise yeah. during uh, the hockey game yeah. and the football game, but that didn't mean well, you were getting anybody. We saw the ads yeah. and stuff, but what's your, and like you thoughts? and I, you and I are really, really good cross section, right? Is, is you and I are similar in age. We have yeah. some similar tastes, and then we have a lot of divergent tastes, right? Like, right. so you and I like some of the same things. So in the past, I like I'd be able to go, okay, I'm a food manufacturer. I like these two guys and what they're after, so I can target both in Toronto, in Vancouver, these two dudes and their demographics, and we're good. Now I got to hit everybody in the 50 year old category right across Canada to figure out if I can find someone who likes me. So your your costs have really gone up, like substantive they're gonna go up like four to five times right because now you're you're if not more right because now the audience size you're going after has to be like six to seven times what you could narrow right down to so for for big brand companies you're a little bit back to the old time spending for little companies that have been able to target That's catastrophic for them. it's catastrophic right because now you're like let's say your cost of acquisition would be <clears throat> you know, seven or eight dollars, right? Which is very good. So let's say for a little brand under five million dollars, your cost of acquisition, when you kind of like throw everything together, might be anywhere from eight, which is really good, to about fifteen dollars. And that's is was or be. is. Uh, that's what it was and the uh, under the old rules, right? And that's when I so, was being able to go on the Facebook yeah, yeah, and yeah, I could yeah. I could pick your name and correct. pretty much say people correct. like Phil, yeah. friends of Phil, correct. like correct. that kind of thing. So so you kind of think like, okay, so at, at fifty dollars, like at a fifty dollar item, like you and I from our co you you kind of go a fifty dollar item might be like a five dollar cost. Right. And I'm adding eight to ten dollars in advertising and then I'm adding eight to ten dollars in shipping. Right. To like all half. in, I can still I can still make money. Right. Because I'm yeah. I'm at, let's say, 20 bucks. So at 25 bucks for $50 retail, I can still pocket $25 out of this. Right. If and I that's get also it on the platform, but your platform you're on was still taking 
but percentage is too correct, correct, wasn't? correct. Okay. So okay. you know, so okay. somewhere in there. But now you're going okay. So if I'm a five dollar retail or a five dollar cost, I'm now spending. Let's go conservative. Let's go twenty to twenty five dollars in advertising cost, and then you're that's conservative. And, then, and now and now your shipping is going to be Ship twenty to twenty five dollars. Right. So you got fifty dollars between the two. You haven't done anything. Yeah. And now I still got to pay the so, site. So for, money, for D to C brand now, now you're going, wait a second, do I want to be here or do I want to be somewhere else? Well, if now if I go to a Walmart, now all of a sudden the, <clears throat> the costs look a little more reasonable, right? Like I'm a $5 cost. I'm going to spend, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to spend some cash on, on terms, right? Like 180 days, 1% net 180, uh, but I'm shipping to one DC. Right, so right. I'm shipping a one right. distribution center, sorry, DC, right. and then I'm gonna pay a program fee. You know, uh, well, not Walmart. Walmart would be, uh, yeah, it would be an everyday low cost, right? And then you you would spend some money on rollbacks and things like that, right? But now you've got room to go, right? So all of a sudden you've recovered some of your synergies because I'm not sending out right. single packages, I'm not advertising to single people. I'm, I can do some broad scope marketing and drive them to Walmart. Right. Um, so now you're going, okay, so at a $50 retail, I can actually still make some money. Still not going to make what I made before, so I'm not going to pocket 25 bucks. I'll pocket 10. Right. Still okay, because the other way, I'm not going to make any money. So I guess what it, what it potentially forces is... Like if you're going to do an online, this is a very generic, so bear with me. But if you're going to do a, 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 if you're going to go online with products, you either really have to have like bare bones, zero cost, right? So, I mean, you know what I mean? Like you, you got to have the cost of goods of nothing practically and have a really high retail. Mm -hmm. Or you got to go and start selling at four or $500,000 items where your, your penny profit is in that three, four hundred dollar well, range, I guess, because well, how else do you manage it? Yeah, like, how do you I manage think... a ten dollar item. Let's say you got let's say you, you imported from from Asia. You're doing this yourself. You're not talking retail because yeah. you, you didn't want to do retail. So you're buying it for five, selling for ten. You're making the 50 margin. Right. Which there's, there's still a... structure wouldn't work in retail. Now you've screwed yourself. Yeah. You going to retail. But there's if you're still the online. Room. What do you do? No, but there's still room. It. I, I think it depends on your products. Right. So if you have a broad appeal product. Uh, I know every brand thinks that, but you don't, right? Like there are very few items that are very broad appeal, but if you have a broad appeal item, um, trying to think of something. Um, the headphones. Pretend headphones head like is a good one. Earbuds. Just so you know why. You know why well, I say earbuds? You know why? You, know, you can't but, ship that regular mail, by the way. But Bluetooth Bluetooth is complicated. Let's, let's say... Um, Oh my gosh, um, we, we're trying to keep this fast thoughts, but um, let uh, USB cables. Okay. Let's do that. So USB cables. So USB C, which is you know probably sixty percent of the market uses USB C to charge. iPhones are going that way. So in another couple of years, everybody's using USB C cables, right? right? So on an item like that, you could make marketing synergies work because you you don't need to narrow down to a segment. Everybody needs those cables, right? So you could do some broad scope marketing, keep it cheap. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, like those are things that you can do. But if you're the reason I the reason part of the reason, there's more reasons than that, but like a Warby Parker or Harry's, right? Harry's, you know, was a D to C brand that is now in every major, you know, because you just can't survive it, right? Like you there's not enough room to be custom and ship custom kits out to everybody. Right. You know, and then and then hope that you're going to make it right. There's not enough synergy in it, right? Like you're doing very specific marketing to a a much smaller target. You know, because Harry's is um, you know, it's like a high, it's a higher end bespoke, you know, kind of grooming tool. So not every, it's not your Gillette customer, right? Like it's right. somebody, you know what I mean? Like so, so it's difficult, right? So well, I was thinking, like, remember Dollar Shave Club. Yeah. How would they survive in today's world? I don't know. Because again, you know, I, I, I don't think. Well, like, Dollar Shave Club won't because Dollar Shave, they so sold, they bought, right? They bought by Unilever. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if yeah. they were in today's world, yeah. how, do they, how do they It'd make a go of it? Yeah. Yeah. Because right? you're, you know, the margins are not there and then volume's not there. And, and 
like every time you <laughs> ship a box you you'll lose money on freight right so it's just not a it's going to be difficult like i think um to come back to your early question like the i can't remember if you asked it at this opening but like future of retail i think you are getting into retailers and and you know if it's i guess because if i start when i start doing when, when i read the article and because again, the cost of acquisition and stuff, I mean, I know what it costs me to, to play in my world and yeah. I know what it costs to ship. And I know that if I went back, like right at the start of the pandemic, before everything went right to shit, like in all the shipping and stuff, right. You could sell like, literally I could buy a card for, let's say a dollar, mm -hmm. get it graded. It would cost me now I'm into the card plug for 13 bucks mm -hmm. with the envelope and shit like that. I mean, you know, let's say 14 bucks. Right. You could sell cards all day for twenty five dollars, even if eBay took 10, 15 yeah, percent. Yeah. It really didn't matter. You Whatever. could do it. Yeah. Yeah. But now you can't ship the cards at those rates. You can't buy them at those rates. eBay's taking like everything's like all of a sudden, like the minimum card to make any money. Like you got to have like a fifty dollar retail and you got to be all in at about half to really make it worthwhile. Otherwise, you're spending a lot of time sitting in the basement shipping. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you're now to the point where it's almost like you're not like I have to charge eighteen fifty if you want a package expedited or even regular mail because now the thickness has gotten to the point I can't stamp things anymore like I can't put four stamps or three stamps and get it to you yeah I've got yeah. to go to regular yeah. parcel or expedited and now it's four or five six times I it's think no longer dollar ninety four it's fifteen bucks I think retailers are going to have more power. But That's I also right. think that retailers, to. I think retailers also, though, are going to be harder up because the consumer also understands what's out there right now. And so I think your vanilla choices aren't going to be good enough anymore. So I, I don't think carrying your top three, top four is going to be enough. I think like for two reasons. One is because we are we're in a tough place right now. Supply chain is going to be an issue. You're right. not going to be able to carry you. The out of stocks are going to be crazy. Right. Um, so and you'll so have diversity until this all levels. You up. must. Right. I think because you got to open yeah. up to more vendors. Right. And then so so it's not a bad thing for DTC right now, because my bet is right now buyers are trying to figure out some of that stuff. Right. So, you know, so, <clears throat> you know, if you've got a good reason to be in retail, they they'll want you, you'll want, you'll want to be there and they'll want you there. But you can and see then, that, Phil. Yeah. Almost every major retailer, London, Savon included yeah. on the West Coast and your guys, yeah. a lot of them never used to do a lot of, as much D, D, uh, DSD to the sort yeah, of yeah, direct yeah. to store. Yeah. And a lot of them didn't do as much local as they all claimed. And all of a sudden, when the supply chain started tightening up and you can't get salt from Italy or you can't get yeah. an olive oil from yeah. Spain, yeah. all of a sudden, the local type things we're allowed a lot more flexibility to get yeah. into the stores, yeah. right? And I, I think that the retailers that are going to survive are the ones that adapt that model. One, because they've got to stay ahead of out of stock. So it's going to be, yeah. sorry, you don't get anymore, right? Like, you know, in our old days, when like with big companies, when you ran out of stock, what you did is you put an allocation model. So you kind sure. of went, look, I have 100 cases, right? And so I'm going to go by fair share. So if Loblaws is 25 share of my business, they get 25 cases. Right. And like Kenny would call someone like me and go, I'm a great customer. Don't give me the seven or the 10 cases that my fair share would say I'm allotted because out in Vancouver, I'm a big deal. So give me more, right? And I would say to him, nah, I'm a big guy. I don't care. I'm sorry. That's all I got. You get 10 or nothing, right? But I think that now... It's not going to be that. It's going to be, I don't have more and I don't know when it's coming because of this, all this stuff. And then, you know, the buyer is going to have to go, I've got to find an alternative, right? So I'm going to have to go and find a little guy who's, who's doing this right. and like go and acquire it so that I can put it in my store so right. I can keep people coming back. Yeah. So I think the buyer's jobs get tougher. Um, and then I, I, but I do think retail gets more exciting. I think retailers, that can do that will come out ahead. Um, and then I do think you'll see a bunch of these um, DTCs go away. Actually, I, don't I think it slows down the, I think it slows down the entrepreneur movement we've been seeing. Cause I think people will yeah, I think realize right. like I've got freaking great ideas um, or a freaking great product, but I can't make it all. 
I just can't. I can't afford it because I can't, you know, because we've heard from the show like a bunch of brands that have brought in six, eight, 12 months worth of supplies. Yeah. So if you have the cash position to do that, you might be in good shape. But for everybody else, it'll be, look, I ran out of stuff to sell. So I'm closing my doors and going to find a job. No, right? I, so, I agree with you. And I, th- yeah. and I think this is the, probably the time. Like, because we, we've had people on, we both know it, that a lot yeah. of them used like the online, sort of like the farmer's market mentality. Yeah. So if yeah. they weren't going to traditional retail, if they yeah. bought it for five, they'd sell it for 10. Yeah. That I model so. is not going to work. No, I don't in, think so. In retail. So it's back to small brands is really stop think look at your cost structure look at all your costs and try to figure out what it's supposed to be because yeah wow okay anyway i thought it was very interesting because i just thought i don't know who the hell knows where this is going to go yeah me too i I thought it was an interesting uh thought it was an interesting article okay i got nothing else for you okay just bug me thought i'd call you